So first, first of all, for a couple of you, I know Harumi had a hard time. Jared figured out that even though they said this and said don't put the quotes, you actually want to put the quotes. Oh no, not the quotes. Oh, you didn't put the quotes. Yeah, I was like, BM480 exclamation point 2014. Okay, all right. That was the thing that got added when uh, we got copied over. There's no exclamation point. So it's just dire.bm480.2014. Not dire BM480. 2014. I mean, we, we want to be enthusiastic about, about 480, but well, we don't need to be that. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how that exclamation point creeped, creeped in there. But. So there is no, yeah, they were very explicit, no quotes. So I thought when you said that, it actually would be quotes. Um, all right, so I got back, uh, I just want to check. So team one, which is team one for today? And you're ready to go? Yes. Team two, okay, and you're ready to go? Team three, okay, you're ready. Team four, okay, team five? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're ready this time, don't we? <laughs> I had no doubt. Okay, so four was here, right, and five. <clears throat> now the question is, was there, was there, is there any team that has not presented? That's what I thought, Nathan, I thought your team. So you're gonna, you guys can go six. Okay. six. We're six. You're six? Yeah. Did I tell you you were going six? Uh -huh. So there you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, so you're six. So I, so that is every, every team has had a chance to present, so let's, We'll go through those. Uh, we'll go through those six, and um, what's that? <coughs> what team? What team are you? Did I, what team did I? Which one did I tell you? Fifth. Fifth. And what? When did I tell you you were going? For fourth. 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 Okay. All right. So every. So everybody's. We've got five teams. Everybody's had a chance to do it. All right. So I make sure we're all in. No, no, no. no, no. You haven't gone yet, but you're you're team number five today, right? Our team number seven. Our team seven. There's six. There's six. You're six. We haven't even got. I don't think we actually got a number ever. Okay, so six, seven. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you helping me with the counting. All right. So let's turn it over to team number one. Redbox to move into and for them to be successful. And the reasons being 
Under the debit and credit card usage, by 2020, India's usage for both debit and credit cards is expected to double by 2020. Um, demand for Western films is close to about 10%, with 90% being made up with domestic and local films, which is also why part of our strategy includes working with Bollywood to develop um, some of the core competencies there. Um, the third point, an underdeveloped infrastructure. We felt this was extremely important. So looking at the other geographies that Netflix or other online streamers were entering, um, they typically entered when megabytes per second was 1.87, and that internet usage in the population was approximately around um, 22%. This is why India is a great choice, because megabytes per second is 1.47, and the internet usage is only 10%. So this allows us to enter the market and develop a core competency in digital streaming before Netflix or other competitors can come in. And then finally, piracy is able to be managed. Uh, we plan to manage this through two uh, methods. The first is existing laws or infrastructure that's already in place. And secondly, um, DVD encryption, which will prevent um, the copying of a lot of these DVDs. All right, and further details about how we're planning on rolling out in India. First is to create partnerships with different Bollywood studios, such as Dharma Productions in India, so that we can be able to get a little bit cheaper DVDs and distribute widely. And the second is to begin penetrating the kiosk market by putting our kiosks into very high traffic areas, places like Delhi or Bangalore or Mumbai. Um, when it comes to Redbox Digital, right when we enter the market, we'll be begin developing a uh, core competency in streaming online content. Being able to do that, we can do that in two ways, developing our own infrastructure by putting stuff on the cloud and um, preparing to go through different content delivery networks. Or we can prepare to acquire or partner with current streamers in India, such as Big Flicks. And then at the bottom, our estimated pro forma, both with the kiosk and digital sides of the business, let us make up by 2019 <laughs> the lost revenue that we would be making in the shrinking domestic market. Can I ask how many, uh, how many kiosks you're putting in roughly each year? Um, it, we will put in about, we changed, we just chose a percentage each year. We don't have a lot of data on, like this just across the specific of foot, like we're at in the cities, but number of kiosks would grow about 50 to 100 each year. 50 to 100 kiosks in yes. India each year. Right. So the, in five years, you're going to add 500 kiosks in India, something like that. Roughly. So thus far, we've talked about our strategy to move into um, foreign adjacent markets um, in India. The second part of that strategy is to maintain the market share that we currently have in the domestic market in the United States. Um, the first chart currently, um, the DVD rental industry. Uh, media. Uh, in four years, the industry revenue will be less than Redbox's current annual revenue. Um, that being said, as Redbox, we plan to maintain our 45% market share, as shown in that second chart. Um, and we plan on doing that um, by focusing on um, moving to the digital space by leveraging Redbox Instant, as well as leveraging our unique value, which is focusing on new releases in the kiosks. So this breaks down that strategy, uh, the twofold strategy. First, we have the DVD rental, uh, focus on the new releases and maintain that majority market share. And then digital video, uh, we plan on updating our kiosks to cross-sell Redbox Instant and gain and maintain 4% market share, which right now is currently what several uh, minor players in the industry uh, maintain 4%, such as um, Apple, uh, iTunes, and uh, Amazon. And, um, over on the right, um, we plan on doing that offer RBI movies, Redbox Instant at the kiosks, um, as well as allow customers to pay for that at the kiosks. Um, and by completing the strategy, we plan by 2019 to play that one. So. Okay. So we believe that the future of Redbox lies in two elements. One is strengthening our domestic positioning uh, with Redbox Instant, but primarily by expanding into adjacent geographies. So the first stage will be going to adjacent geographies like India, and then future stages for Redbox as they continue to expand will be going to similar adjacent geographies. That will be um, English-speaking countries who have a similar internet penetration um, as India or other countries similar to them. Now one other thing that Redbox should be aware of um, is a shift or a change in the industry. 
So one development that Redbox should keep an eye on is the development of virtual reality or also 3D software. So here we have the Oculus Rift, which is a virtual reality headset. And so this might be a future game changer in the movie or entertainment industry and something that Redbox should be aware about going forward. In conclusion, the current industry and market Redbox is in is slowly dying in the US and it should be expected to be phased out just like DHS is worldwide in the future. Therefore, Redbox needs to not just leverage its current core competencies and physical DVD distributions in foreign markets in order to maintain profitability, but it should also to begin to develop other core competencies such as online streaming in order to become the dominant player in those markets and foreign markets and be able to compete with big players such as Netflix worldwide. <coughs> Any questions? Good. I'll, I'll start. Uh, so, two questions. Uh, one, um, I like the, the, the fact that you laid out some clear criteria for selecting India as a market to enter. What were the other country markets you considered, and what was number two? So some of the other markets that we were considering, initially we were looking at Western countries because there would be no language barrier and be very similar to move into that infrastructure. But what we found was they had high internet penetration, you know, exceeding 20%. And so we felt that if we were to make a move into that market, Netflix could just transition, um, get through with the regulations and move into those markets. So we also looked at uh, like the Philippines and South Africa and other markets and felt that India would be kind of the number one number spot one. to go to first. And number two? would be places where Netflix isn't right now and can't be for the near future, such as um, South Africa as they develop, and uh, the Philippines as well. And do you think, uh, given that there are 47,000 kiosks in the US, um, do you think 500 in India over five years is enough to really make a difference in terms of revenue? We wanted to be really conservative. One thing, the foot traffic in India is much more concentrated than it is in the U.S. I mean, the Smith's kiosk here in Provo is a drop in the pond compared to a Smith's kiosk in um, Mumbai and the Market Square. Um, having said that, though, we didn't have specific data on the amount of concentrations in foot traffic throughout India, so that number is such a change to more Uh, that's your question. So you did the pro forma there up to 2019. I'm wondering, did you explain how you got the yeah, revenue? Yeah, do you want to go to the next on the agenda? So with India, we got kiosk revenue. We didn't have, there's not a lot of DVD sales in India. So kiosk revenue we took as, in the US, we found a percentage comparison of DVD sales to total ticket sales in the US. Took a similar percentage in India. We're assuming that we're going to be selling DVDs between 40 and 50 cents a pop in order to combat with piracy, where the average pirated DVD is anywhere between 54 cents and a dollar. And then digital revenue, we took um, as a percentage of, we took this ratio of digital market share in US to digital market share in, our digital market share in US to kiosk market share, DVD rental market share, and had a similar ratio for India. And we assumed a similar subscription rate as uh, one of the big players in there right now called Big Flix. Um, in order to calculate that, um, our operating, our cost, we use a percent of sales method using Redbox's 2013 um, SEC filing. Team two, you can start to come up with that. Did that answer your question about the yeah. performance? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm wondering what, what is Big Flix's revenue model? What, what do they do? Exactly. So Bigflix's current revenue model is they do a subscription, um, so it's pretty low, it's, it's, it's comparable to like Netflix, but they're a relatively new entrant, only coming in about 2012, and so they're a minority player, and so we expect to be able to leverage Redbox Instant and our Redbox brand to, to be competitive with them and maybe acquire them. Subscription in physical or in streaming or both? Stream, just streaming. The streamers in, in uh, India used to have uh, physical distribution, but just because of their small size and lack of capabilities, all of them discontinued it for the most part. Just the last two quick So really quickly, so I understood your international expansion strategy when it comes to internet connectivity. That's a smart thing, but with the language stuff, that doesn't really matter, right? Because all you need is a market where people watch movies, whether they're dubbed or you know if they have subtitles. If there's a market for movies, you're just delivering movies in a different format, right? 
So it's China, wherever you go, it doesn't matter. So what do you what do you think? So can I go for that? Yeah. So sure. Bollywood produces about a thousand movies yearly, and Hollywood's anywhere between four and five hundred. Um, so Bollywood's a huge producer, like internationally the most movies of any any area produced in Bollywood. So we figure, I mean, with in, with the Indian market already being huge with movies, it would be the logical place to move next and offer a combination of of uh, Hollywood films, but also Bollywood. So we said about ten percent of films watched in India are foreign films, i.e., from the U.S. Uh, but the the offering in the kiosk itself would be highly made up of the Bollywood films. And plus, with the market for DVD rental <coughs> shrinking in the U.S., we wanted to be able to leverage our current resources of the media that we have here to be able to use it elsewhere instead of just throwing it away. Okay, so you mentioned that you wanted to cross-sell Redbox instant with, instant with the kiosk. Yeah. So how exactly do you plan on that working at and why is it going to be Um. Yeah, so um, we plan on cross-selling Redbox instant. <laughs> Currently, in the red box, in the red box machines, they advertise for red box instant, but it's not available to be purchased. Um, and so we plan on um, consolidating that into the uh, consumption chain so that um, customers can can purchase that. Make it simpler and easier for them to do that. So, way, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so the way it looks, that you're gonna get at. The way it looks is if you go to Redbox right now, and let's say you're looking, hey, I really want to watch. What's a cool movie you want to watch? Thor. You want to watch Thor too? Okay. So you go to Redbox and then you scan your card and it said it was there, but oh my gosh, it's not there. So then what would pop up is, hey, since you're here, go ahead and purchase it online. You can access it through your account. And that's the way we're going to begin to emphasize this digital market in India. And then it'll grow. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. So it's kind of like a substitute for yeah. the physical DVD okay. at first, but then it'll yeah. grow. Another thing, Redbox currently has contracts with like Warner Brothers to not provide DVDs until 28 days after the initial DVD release. So we would advertise those films that we have offered on Redbox Instant, but they aren't available in the kiosk for about four weeks. And say, hey, you want to watch this? It's not here. Why don't you share it on your computer? How do you feel right here to get it? Thank you. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Curtis Schaefer and uh, Richard Talbot, um, we're team two. And we focus more on Redbox's domestic strategy and how they're going to deal with the changing market landscape here. Uh, the one big thing that we wanted to focus on was uh, maintaining as much market share as we could with the actual physical rental. Um, what we thought about was a subscription, you get eight bucks a month, and your subscribers can view as many videos as they want. Um, with the actual DVD rentals, it's a buck fifty a pop. They forget to return it sometimes. You end up maybe making eight bucks on one rental instead. So we want to continue to drive um, our customers to use these, but we're also going to do more of an all-inclusive strategy and try to just become the, the market leader in home entertainment. Just make Redbox the go-to place when you're going to watch a movie. So um, we're thinking about doing a pay-per-view. Uh, option where you can actually log on. You don't have to have a subscription. Um, you can get right on for three bucks, um, watch any movie that's in the, uh, the Redbox library, as well as using this to drive our Redbox Instant, um, get more subscribers, and just compete more on the level with Netflix. Make sure that people know, hey, we have Redbox Instant, um, we have a large library of, of videos, and continue to grow this library through partnerships with content providers. Um, but then again, just using all of these different um, channels to, to drive um, market awareness, make sure that people are aware of these things and continue to grab a larger and larger market share of the uh, home entertainment industry. So first, uh, we'll talk about how we're going to continue to drive um, business to our physical kiosk. We want to partner with the locations that we're located with. Um, there's a red box in front of nearly every grocery store, gas station, McDonald's. Uh, we want to use the traffic that's going through those businesses to snag a little bit more for, for our kiosk. So we were thinking about actually placing coupons on the back of, uh, of receipts or also doing um, special deals with the stores. If you buy a thing, a horrible red box or popcorn, you get a free DVD rental. Uh, just making sure that everybody that goes into the store is going to you know, think twice about walking past that kiosk on the way out. Um, and then the good thing about this is the, the, the stores are going to be interested in doing this as we also advertise 
uh, maybe a little bit on our kiosks, hey, grab some popcorn in the store before you head home, or grab a soda, whatever. Um, the benefit to this is, is right now we're at about 9.8 uh, million rentals per week. Um, if we can just get 50 more rentals in each of our stores, that'll bump us up to about 12 million rentals. And um, that equates to about a 25% increase in uh, revenue from just our TV rentals. So it may be dying, but if we can just get that incremental increase from each of our kiosks, that's really going to boost revenue for us. So the next market that we really want to expand into. Just quickly yeah, ask, sure. What's the marginal cost of that revenue? Um, don't know. <laughs> it's it's going to be tiny um, because it doesn't cost much more for them. If they've already purchased the DVD, um, they've got it. So it's going to be basically it's, it's gonna And the pay-per-view market is something we really want to expand into. Um, what's going to set us apart is that this pay-per-view streaming is catering to those customers who normally go to our kiosk to rent DVDs. So in order to do that, um, no account is required. Um, all you need to do is go on. You can have an account if you want to be able to track, for example, movies that you've put in the past. And we're going to have the prices as competitive as we can, so that doesn't cost much more to just do a pay-per-view as opposed to a DVD rental. Uh, we're also going to use our existing outlets that we already have uh, to advertise, for example. Um, sort of as Group 1 mentioned at the kiosk, if it doesn't have a movie or even just, you know, while it's on a screensaver, it says, hey, you know, check out our pay-per-view site. Um, if it doesn't have the movie you want here, you can just rent it online for free, no account required, no subscription required. That will really appeal to these customers, and it also helps us to be able to upgrade them. Um, and this is how we're able to strengthen other markets as well. Um, once customers are using our pay-per-view site, we can encourage them to upgrade to Redbox Instant and say, hey, you've already rented this many movies per month. If you subscribe and become a Redbox, Redbox Instant customer, it would end up being cheaper for you. And we can also encourage continued growth in our DVD rental market by offering, for example, free one-day DVD rentals with every five or so movies that are rented online with pay-per-view. This helps drive growth and also helps us to upgrade our customers to the final market, which is our streaming market and Redbox Instant. Um, in order to be able to make Redbox Instant competitive, we need to devote more resources to improve the number and availability of offerings so that it can compete effectively with other places such as Redbox. Um, Oh, sorry, not Redbox Networks. <laughs> so we're going to do this by being able to create partnerships with content providers. For example, Warner Brothers, Disney is possible uh, for first and exclusive access. We're also going to try and partner with consumer electronic manufacturers, for example, Samsung, so that when consumers buy things like smart TVs and tablets, it already comes with Redbox app or Redbox uh, viewing option right on that hardware. And we're going to be able to use the resources from our DVD rental market to be able to improve this market. And finally, we continue to um, spur the growth of the DVD rental market by offering incentives. For example, anyone who is a Netflix, but who is a Redbox Instant customer, um, gets automatic half off for any DVD rental. Um, that would really help increase that as well. So our final and resulting strategy <coughs> is that we don't just want to be a DVD rental or streaming company. We want to be uh, the home entertainment company that people think of. When, however they want to have their entertainment in the home, they think of Redbox. And our unique value is by being the most convenient and flexible and affordable way to get that entertainment. We already have a bunch of these resources. We have our kiosks. We have a customer base. Uh, we already have you know, Netflix, uh, Redbox instance starting up. And so it really is just developing things. And then the sustainable advantage really comes from the synergy of these three markets, the DVD <coughs> rental, pay-per-view, and um, Redbox instance, all working together to be able to keep our customers satisfied and happy.
So if we can get that, and you know, we have to negotiate that, but um, it would mostly just be you know, swapping advertising um, with the retailers and see if you know, we can just get them to print that. So if there's 25% more revenue, so there's some portion of that is going to have to go to the distributor, in effect, sure. for providing the couponing and right, helping the right. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you think you're sort of maybe splitting that 50 50 or? We're hoping it'd be more than 50 50. Another idea is that while the coupons are only for the first day of rental, so we're sort of encouraging our customers to get it for cheaper for the first day, but then keep it for longer than that first day and pay the full price after that. So we're hoping it would be more than 50 50, especially since the stores would be willing probably to print the coupons for free. Okay. Questions are up here? Yeah. So one of the things that that we were starting to think about. So Redbox's ownership in Redbox is only about 35% and Rise of the Bull is 65%. Sure. Um, and leveraging that resource, would you want to change anything with that? Would you want to leverage any of Verizon's resources since they own a majority share in Redbox instead? Or what do you think? Because that's something we weren't able to really come to a solid conclusion on. Yeah, that's, a, that's that? a good question. Um, we actually want to, <laughs> the only reason we're doing Redbox instant is because <laughs> And because we're, we're trying to compete with Netflix, um, we want to focus as much on the DVD rental as possible and continue to drive that. Um, as far as the partnership <coughs> with Verizon to do that, um, yeah, that's where our partnership with the, the device manufacturers comes in. We can strengthen that even more where, hey, if you buy a Verizon phone, it comes with, um, with your Redbox Instant app right on your Samsung, whatever um, that you buy. Um, and trying to push it more through Verizon. I'm sure you know, Verizon is, is interested in doing that as well. So, yeah. Something else you about. Um, you've mentioned going to share <coughs> partnership with like, Disney or Warner Brothers. I'm mm -hmm. um, just kind of curious what you guys' thoughts are. Because they're partners with Netflix, and so I was wondering like, what you guys would expect the dynamic of that relationship to be. Uh, our, yeah, what it really comes down to, I mean, is basically money with these, these network distributors. Um, and Netflix has that. And so, what we were thinking a lot in this strategy is that we need to use our growth from the DVD rental market and the lucrative profit and the margins that we have from there to be able to help us to grow in this area. So, I mean, they're up there in space. Yeah. <coughs> we really just want them to keep doing what they want to do, which is, is delay the digital release as long as possible. Um, if we could even push it out to, you know, from 20, 28 days back to the two months that it was, we'd be happy with that because then we've got a longer time for people to actually go and rent it, the physical DVD. So, um, you know, we think that we have a better value proposition for them than Netflix does. I mean, saying, hey, you give us earlier access to the, to the DVDs, we'll buy millions of your DVDs um, and push them through our kiosks, and then, you know, prolong the, the digital release as long as possible. Okay, very good. Thank you.
just click here to sign up for your Redbox. It's turning Amazon's one-click strategy into Redbox one-click strategy. So immediately, you're getting people signed up on this free trial, and they can become aware of Redbox instant. Next is by selling advertising space. One of Redbox's strategies and benefits is that they have these kiosks in high traffic areas where lots of people are going. This is exactly what advertisers want for their products. So if Redbox can say, hey, you know, you can advertise on our screen, right? When customers come to rent, they'll see your advertising, or there'll be something on the side of the kiosk. This is another way that Redbox can increase its revenues. Next is to partner with Domino's Pizza. So if you think about the job to be done that people are hiring Redbox for, they want super convenient entertainment option and cheap. And Redbox can make it even more convenient by partnering with someone like Domino's Pizza to make the entertainment opportunity, entertainment experience even more convenient and still cheap. So picture this, you come to the kiosk, you rent your movie and it says, would you like a Domino's Pizza delivered with this? You can select yes, again, it's just all in the same transaction and it's going to be easy to access. If you want to think how much this could increase the revenues, they, Redbox, it's 1.2 million, DVDs are rented through them every day. So if you take that and just say that 10% of the people who rent a DVD each day are going to also buy pizza, and they just buy one pizza, and it's the cheapest pizza, and let's say Redbox just gets 3% back from Domino's on the, the sale of the pizza, that's already $10.5 million minimum each year in revenues that's pretty much pure profits because there's no cost associated with putting this into place. Next is creating an online community. So this is leveraging Redbox's game rentals. So instead of just having it there and the only offering is you go to your Redbox and get your, your video game, Redbox can create through their Redbox Instant on their online community a place where people can play games, they can watch movies together. And this what this is going to do also is increase switching costs. So people have this community, they don't want to just go over to Netflix if they start providing games. They don't want to go somewhere else because their community is already there. And that way we can retain our customers. So overall, we believe that Redbox will be able to increase their market share and strengthen their barriers to imitation by um, marketing more the Redbox Instant, and getting the customers hooked on that, selling their advertising space, partnering with Domino's, and lastly, getting them online. Option, do you want a um, do you want a streaming account mm -hmm. essentially? So you're assuming this is like one click because they have my yeah, <coughs> credit card's credit already card. there, the <coughs> name's already there, and so you can just sign up. Okay, and then when I go to find like Domino's Pizza, mm -hmm. again credit card's there. Mm -hmm. um, is and is, is it going to say do you want it delivered to this address? My address will mm -hmm. pop up. Yeah, that's the idea. So we'll store all that. They'll have your favorite pizza. You can just like is it going to have order. the same order as last time? It pulls yeah, up, you can have all order. those options. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this all figured out. <laughs> okay. um, all right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, yeah. Why does Domino's get this deal? Why not Papa John's? Yeah. Caesar's? There's a couple of reasons we chose Domino's. First of all, it's the second largest pizza chain in the United States. And so we wanted to find one that was as close to as many people. The biggest one is Pizza Hut. The reason we chose Domino's over Pizza Hut is because of the price. Pizza's better. Because oh. Domino's is so much cheaper, and we want to access these customers. They want convenient and low cost, so we choose Domino's. Yeah. So, if I was going to Redbox, I'd usually try to get in and out. Like, if I had an advertisement pop up that would bug me, how would you do that? So, it's not something that pops up, it's just like the welcome screen. So, you just press next and you go. Or, we also talked about for future Redbox machines, they could have a side of it being a specific advertisement. Just rotates. Yep. Um, so how how does the strategy save off the, the imminent death of DVDs? So one thing we actually found was DVD rental market isn't dying as much. What's dying is people buying their DVDs. And so for a while at least we can still leverage you know people who rent DVDs, but we're also strengthening that online. 
red box instant. You need more people there before DB does die, before the idea of red box is gone. They'll switch over to red box instant instead of just assuming that this is. Do you have an estimate, though? We're still seeing growth in, in physical rent work DVDs through the kiosks. Mm -hmm. Any idea when that's going to actually peak and start to turn down? No idea. Any thoughts, too? <laughs> okay, last question. So I have a question just on, on that last comment. So you said that. So where did you, what what sources for like, for like the DVD rental market growing? Because for Redbox, it is, but what about the overall DVD rental? I honestly don't remember the article I read, but I was I don't think it was just that it was growing, but it was this idea that society seems to think that DVDs are phasing out. And it did talk about no one buys DVDs anymore. When you don't come, people don't have their stock of DVDs, but people are still renting them. And so, yeah, the trend's going to go down eventually, but it's not about to drop off. But I don't know if it's that. sat next to red boxes and bothered people as they came up and asked them about their preferences. <laughs> Some lady actually asked me if I worked for Redbox. I said no, but I'd like to, because we believe they're going places. Um, an interesting thing we found with consumer preferences is that people don't really care that much about the competition between Netflix and Redbox. A lot of the people actually had accounts at Redbox, or at Netflix, Hulu Plus, and Amazon Prime, and they still came to Redbox. Why? Because Redbox has most recent releases of any video service, 30 to 45 days before anyone else. The second thing is that a lot of these families have these massive 60 inch plasma screens and they want to watch their DVDs on these big TVs. Now of course, you can connect Netflix and all, all these things to TVs, but people don't do it because they're lazy, they're not tech savvy or whatever. The third thing is that DVDs offer a viewing experience that's more reliable than the internet. You don't have to wait for buffering. Some areas don't have internet connection. So this offers uh, an advantage that Netflix can never do for you. Now, despite these advantages, despite the convenience of going to Redbox, there are some problems that we see. Yeah, what are some of the big problems? What we're seeing as a trend in the market is that everything is heading more towards online streaming accounts rather than physical DVD uh, type of accounts, which is why Blockbuster was, was definitely uh, undercut by a lot of online services. So, uh, we, we do compete in that regard. We do have Redbox Instant, and in some ways, it's it's even better than Netflix because we have new releases as well as four free uh, DVD rentals per month. Uh, but and it's the same price. Uh, but we didn't have the first mover advantage in that regard. So that's a, that's a challenge that we have to overcome. Is, is competing on the online streaming aspect. Uh, the second aspect is that uh, online streaming we don't have perhaps the same. Uh, and, well, yeah, we have. And another problem is the inventory management. So one of the biggest things is that is that we have to manage the inventory of when we're getting these DVDs back and how we're allocating them between kiosks. There's a, there's a high risk that eventually our technology will be disrupted as kiosks become become obsolete, just like Blockbuster became obsolete. That, that's a high amount of investment that eventually may go go out. So that's something that we have to handle. And while, while we see that the trends are moving towards the digital age and towards online streaming, we still believe there's a lot of strength in the home viewing market. So we are gonna, we're gonna expand that while we expand and plan on a, a stronger online presence. So, so 
so that, that comes under a few recommendations. One is to to contain the often different services that we have. Redbox as well as physical kiosks, but to expand more internationally uh, into the foreign markets, which are already doing. They've already expanded to Canada, and we recommend expanding into other markets. Um, we also recommend going to higher traffic areas and then providing more online content so that we can uh, better compete with online streamers. So. Uh, Talk about international expansion first. Um, they, they've already started doing trial periods with Canada just to see the feasibility of that type of marketing. Um, we recommend going into other locations that have similar um, demographics and technological infrastructure as the US. But we also recommend uh, very much going with the physical kiosk strategy into countries where online streaming is not very applicable. For instance, Mexico, there's the found stat that says there's about 31% of households that have access to the online uh, to, to the internet. Uh, that'd be a very feasible strategy. It's a very low cost type of field and non-commitment uh, type program versus Netflix. So it'd be very uh, very feasible for a place like Mexico. Uh, so we recommend trying out for the periods to, to see And we don't see a big barrier with languages. I mean, if you can gross with one movie $100 million in China, there's a movie market there. And you take the same viewing experience they get in the theaters, whether it's subtitles or dubs, and you replicate it with a DVD, which is applicable almost anywhere. The second thing is to expand into more high traffic areas. You'll see in Europe, at some metro stations, they have these massive vending machines, which is like everything you could need in a grocery store right there in a vending machine. The idea here with Redbox is to get people on the way home, whether it's at grocery stores, metro stations, or even in airports. So the idea is to expand to these high traffic areas and use this people on the way home idea to increase our, the volume that we, that we rent. Um, we also recommend, as we mentioned, broadening the content that we offer uh, on the online streaming services as well as the kiosks. We do compete in terms of having the newest releases, which is by far our best strategy, but if we expand to more content that other providers like Amazon and, and Netflix provide, uh, we'll decrease the amount of power that they have to the market as we offer everything more that they already offer. The second thing is one of the brilliant things that Netflix did was to create original content like House of Cards. The only way you can watch House of Cards is to get a Netflix account. It's an exclusive offer. So the more that we are exclusive as Redbox, I thought the video game idea was great, the more exclusive we become, the more advantage we have. And questions? Would you start with Mexico? And um, the question, I don't know if you considered this, but this is a question I was going to ask earlier to you on India. <clears throat> Any idea of what the penetration of DVD players is in Mexico? Because you got to have a DVD player in order to put Redbox in. That's right, that's a fantastic question. We, we feel like the fact that Blockbuster is still an upscale chain in Mexico, I mean, it's still, it's still thriving there. And either they're still all using VHS or they've all moved to DVDs. And so we feel like Mexico is a great place, 31% internet connectivity. So Blockbuster is thriving. They're from, yeah. The yeah. So we feel like we can. So your international that. expansion strategy actually should be to follow Blockbuster. Wherever Blockbuster is. Where, yeah, we feel like it's <laughs> right. Because it's, it's, it worked here. Right. It will likely work anywhere else. <laughs> Well, but with that, we'd also recommend any countries that we start to expand into internet-wise, we'd also expand into physical kiosks so that we can leverage our Redbox instant access as well if we're expanding into the same country at the same time. So, you okay. so for your original content, how do you go about acquiring that? Is that something you start doing internally, producing shows, or is that something that you're going to partner in? The big, the big challenge we see with that is that Netflix has revenues about $4 billion a year, and they have a lot more capital than we do to invest in developing original content. They started House of Cards in-house, just did. With Redbox, we have $1.9 billion, about $268 million in profits, this in 2012, I believe. So we have a little bit more limited capital, but we're thinking either developing in-house or partnering with some production studio to, to deliver the content. Yeah. Last question. I was curious because what we found is that Redbox Streaming doesn't have the new releases, but their kiosks do. Did you guys find information that said that they did have the new releases on streaming? That it, it's the case that the always the physical rentals have 30 to 45 days before internet streaming, but okay. the advantage to Redbox Instant is that you get four free rentals a month, okay. so you still get that that advantage. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So
So, uh, being very proprietary and differentiated, we started with the Red Rocks logo. Uh, we're Team Five: uh, Sam, Andrew, uh, Russell, and Sean. So. We want to start off, we have three main initiatives we want to do with the strategy moving forward with Red Blocks. Anybody want to read our three strategies? Travel box, creating loyalty points, big screens, ads. All right, perfect. What the crap is a travel box? <laughs> so a travel box is basically a red box put inside, as some people mentioned, within airports, within metros, places that people can go from point A to point B with limited access to Wi-Fi, um, where they can have a physical, tangible DVD with Similar, similar like travel accessories, for example, headphones, small pharmaceuticals, things that you can get on an easy, convenient basis that you don't want to pay 50 bucks at the airport terminal. So the travel box is this is mainly within, um, like I said, airports, metros, bus stations, places that hey, I want to be traveling from San Francisco to New York. I have, you know, how anybody knows that time frame. So hey, I can get three movies on that, and the kid in front of me is screaming, or the kid in front of me is screaming. So I want some ibuprofen and some airport. So we can get low cost, high margin, very small to transport, and very easily, you know, manage through inventory. Um, so that's the travel box, first main initiative. Second is the streaming loyalty points. Um, people have been talking about how do we move from our physical, tangible red boxes to an instant, you know, red box instant online streaming service that people are unaware of, and there's very little barriers to entry or, or um, uh, entry there. So our main idea is, hey. We want to be able to become the high volume, low cost provider, and based on loyalty points, you can go and actually get redeemable movies only through Redbox Instant. So, for example, um, there's a businessman traveling, he's got three kids, and he's flying all the time in and out of these big airports. He's going watching a, uh, a, a, uh, a movie or two on each plane flight, and by the time he's done with his weekend trip, he has enough to get one redeemable movie online through Redbox Instant. So his kids are going to love him to death, travel all you want, Dad, because I can get free movies online. <laughs> and that's not something that's redeemable in other places. So through a loyalty program, you're able to create a more family environment and bring awareness from the tangible, hey, this dying red box you know, DVD rental industry to we just have the biggest market share because of sheer volume through our DVD rentals. So streaming loyalty points. So movies actually are a substitute for parental quality. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So overly stressed, uh, driven businessmen can actually you know, still bring value to the families. Um, and the last point we want to bring um, is, as some people mentioned about advertising revenue, um, you know, along with the family type of environment, we want to put a big TV on top of the red box. So what's that going to do? Apart from the side little um, panels that people have and say, hey, here's the, the title of the movie, um, we want to put on ad space. So what does that mean? We're, we're content, or we're talking with different distributors, different um, retailers, anybody who wants to put advertisements in high traffic locations. We can be pumping trailers, we can be pumping shampoo, we can be doing anything on that um, on that red box, but pre uh, preferably doing movie trailers through some of these uh, these content providers like Disney. Um, and once again, that allows us to, to cross sell not only some of our red box instant, it becomes a self promoter, it can be promotion with our partners where we're actually physically located within these retailers or within the airports. And uh, you know, if we want to start you know, cross selling some our own products, like red box instant or other travel boxes, very easy to do that. All right, so, so based on this, the new market, uh, we're going to go through kind of strategic analysis of the new red box. Um, similar thing, the market's the same. We're still doing DVD rentals, um, adding a couple of conveniences with the travel box. Um, but moving into airports, we're going to provide high volume. And if you think about it, okay, I have a couple red boxes within each terminal. How many airplanes are coming in and out of there? How many flights? How many people are on those airplanes? And uh, let's say a percentage of those are willing to spend a buck or two to get a movie. Um, you can understand this to be very, very high, high volume very quickly. Um, and same with hotels. Uh, going off the idea of the businessman again, um, oftentimes, I'll take my father for example. Uh, my father's traveling all the time, and uh, not that he doesn't love to get totally wasted with some of his co coworkers. He'll find himself in his hotel room, 8 o'clock at night, he's not tired, he's got another hour or two before he goes to bed. Having something next to the ice machine would be a very, very convenient idea. Um, so after watching your three movies on your airplane, you can go home, watch another one at the, at the hotel, and by the end of the weekend, like you said, you have enough to get one redeemed at Redbox Red Instant. So that's the market. Unique value, similar with what it currently is, uh, providing superior convenience and control of the consumer at a low cost. Uh, you think, well, how would this get inside of airports? How does this get inside of these different types of hotels? Well, for example, JetBlue might not be happy about it. We've you know, acquired and developed this whole process. 
well, a company like Delta or anybody else who doesn't have that proprietary knowledge, you know what, let's go undercut JetBlue by, hey, we offer Redbox. You know, we're gonna stick them all up in our terminal and you know, we just stuck it for JetBlue. So um, there's a lot of unique value we can provide to a lot of different airlines and no need to partner with particularly one or the other, um, but there's a lot of people that would be very anxious to be able to, like I said, stick to some of the competition. And lastly, the resource and capabilities. Um, Redbox is great. You know, they're great at building the boxes. They're great at building the writing machines. Um, and also with their connections and the brand name. And, you know, they have experience with vending, so adding small, once again, small, low cost, high margin products um, with a large network effect can allow them to stay within their same core competencies, but also branch out and have additional revenue streams apart from just DVD rentals. And that's it. Any questions? That's kind of my vote. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> by the way, that looked a lot better on my, my computer screen. I don't know why I can't read that right now, but it looked a lot better. So, so uh, I'll, I'll just start, let me just start. So, um, so travel box will be a new type of kiosk. Yeah, the travel box, travel box by red box. By red box, and this is going to be a, a smaller or same, roughly same size. Roughly same size, probably like you, you assume like okay, you have the red box, and then just a small little thing on the side where you can see like a vending machine. Hey, I see there's headphones, there's you know pillows, there's little. You know, eye coverings to sleep on the plane. And airports <coughs> is the primary, primary. The primary, yeah. I mean, you would look at like, you know, like a Greyhound or some of these other bus stations. I mean, metros would be okay, but mainly within like large distance travel where you're not going to have access to Wi-Fi. So that streaming service would actually be less of a desirable thing. Where hey, you know what? If I can stick it to my laptop, I'm stuck on this plane. It's a much more desirable. Thing. When we came up with the idea, we were banking on the fact that all of the major terminals that you'd be flying to would have them. So then you'd be able to rent it, watch it while you're on the plane, and then easily return it right when you land. And of course, if the businessmen are busy, are busy or someone's busy and they take it, then we're going to make money off of it. So, the, the, so yeah, it's more, it's more, it, just having a, a large network within just the airports. So, because we're making on the fact that there's going to be high traffic in those areas throughout all airports, and it's really convenient. It's a dollar instead of paying five bucks on, on the actual plane itself, which usually aren't very good. So, that's very yeah. Any other, other, other questions? Yeah, we're back in the yeah. How much growth do you expect your strategy to get in your funds? Yeah, so, I mean, like I said, we don't run the exact figures, but if you want to draw the, the tree diagram, you look, well, okay, we have, like I said, this many flights, we have this many airports, this many, you know, track, you know, people on each plane, let's assume, I don't know, uh, a fair figure of 100 people on each plane, you know, small flight. Um, let's say a percentage of that are spending, you know, depending on the, the distance of the flight again, let's say you have three-hour flight, you know, you can get one movie on there. So let's say, of those 100, maybe 20, are like, you know what, I'm bored out of my mind, it's worth a buck to me. You know, and they're not six bucks or seven bucks, just because I'm on a plane. Um, you can find, well, if that's one flight, how many flights are coming in and out of uh, LAX? Um, you, can, you can run the figures. We didn't run the exact figures, but just with the airports and the hotel model, pretty straightforward. Um, but then, you know, with some of the loyalty programs saying, well, actually, when you start getting some content, and with the ad revenue of TVs, marginal cost, buying a TV and paying for electricity, um, so, you know, you say, hey, we're paying ad space, maybe 30 bucks a month for, you know, an additional, you know, three seconds of, you know, instead of baby wipes, you know, you can figure out what you can do, like, a lot of revenue off of it. So, we better move to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for our Redbox strategy, we come up with just a couple different ideas. We have a quick overview of it. Redbox is the main provider for kiosks in the market. Some of the complications they're facing are as content increasingly moves online, their competitors are these streaming companies, and they have to find ways to stay relevant as they move forward. So this is what we came up with. We have three different options that if they want to stay relevant in the short term, one, they can offer bundling services with their kiosks at their current locations. Two, they can focus on filling their kiosks with premium goods that online streaming providers don't have. And then the three, in the long term, in order to stay relevant, they'll have to move to online streaming content. So first with bundling is how we came up with this is most red boxes are currently located at stores or restaurants, fast food chains or anything like that. And so we thought that they could offer, you know, similar to some of the previous teams, if it's located outside of a Walmart or something like that, maybe they can offer coupons to buy, complement goods, popcorn, soda, anything like that. 
but one of the ideas that we liked is we just have this break on the side was to bundle it with pizza. But instead of ordering a pizza from the kiosk, what if you're just already ordering pizza online, as many people do, and they'll bring you a Redbox DVD to your house. So when you go to Domino's or Pizza Hut or whatever, you can get your pizza, and then the cost of a red box is an extra dollar, so if you're paying 10 to $20 for the pizza to be delivered, that extra cost of the dollar is probably not significant to most customers. And so then you can get a pizza delivered to your house with the red box DVD. And we really like that idea because there are thousands of different pizza you know, delivery services. There's local ones, there's chains, and we found a number that there are more than one billion pizzas delivered every year. And I'm assuming that's worldwide, but you know, some amount of that is in the United States, and we thought that that would be an excellent opportunity for Redbox to continue to grow with the bundling service. Is that most Americans love pizza, and if you're ordering the pizza, you can get, just get the Redbox DVD delivered to your house. The second option, or the second strategy we had was to have Redbox kiosks have premium goods. As content increasingly moves online, and as people like Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, etc., are getting the same content that we offer in kiosks. There's less of an incentive to go there. But many DVDs, after they're released, will come out with an extended edition or director's cut or something like that that offers content that you won't find online because most of the online content is typically just the you know just the feature film. But for movie connoisseurs or buffs who like those extra deleted scenes and director's commentary, etc., if we're filling our kiosks with those goods, it still gives you a reason and an incentive to go there because you might have Netflix, but you won't get Lord of the Rings extended edition, you know, online, but you could still get that stuff in the kiosk. So by providing the premium goods in the kiosks, it will still give people an incentive and a reason to be visiting these things to be renting out the uh, goods. And increasingly we thought about video games would be a good market because we found 56% um, of US households own some type of video game system. And that will be another reason because you know our competitors like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, currently they're not providing video game streaming services. There is a video game rental service, but we thought Redbox could differentiate somewhat. And then our third was, in order to stay relevant in the future, really there is no other option than to go streaming and go online. Because as people increasingly move forward, as internet penetrates, especially in the US market, we can't see DVDs remaining relevant that long in the future. And whether that's five years or 10 years, I think a lot of us will see, you know, for example, example Apple, on most of their new laptops, they don't even include CD drives anymore. So that gives you an idea of one of the biggest technology companies and what they think about CDs is that they don't even put it in their laptops. And so we thought as that increasingly moves forward, you know, many more people, maybe instead of getting DVD players, you'll just have a box that you get cable and it streams all your DVDs to as well. And so, you know, exact ideas of what Redbox needs to do, I think a lot of them have been spoken. You know, there's things like developing original content that they could look at, as well as providing with some of the major media producers. But, you know, we just found this graph here, and we made this just of the amount of online video growth that as it moves forward, one statistic we like is that video streaming will become more prominent than even social media services within the next, like, five to 10 years. Question, uh, interesting idea about having the pizza company deliver. Um, so two questions related to that. Number one, where do they return the movie? And how much does the pizza company get uh, in terms of their slice of the bunch 25? Or whatever? Are, you, are you in charge more than the typical dollar 25 because it's conveniently delivered to your home? Yeah, you know, that's a thought to tack on additional revenue since there's the delivery service and it's kind of a premium service then. So you could charge more for the DVD. Or, you know, this could be something pizza companies were just interested in going into because it could boost their sales. I'm thinking that the additional cost to like get the DVD is very low for Pizza Hut. If we had kiosks at those stores or maybe there's one right outside. So you'd actually put a, a red box at, at the Domino's, at the Pizza yeah. Hut's. And there could be, you know, employee code to get the DVD and just bring it for the pizza. And we 
think that could be something they would be interested in doing just because the marginal, if they're already making foods and delivering it, you know, if they could get additional pizza sales but also delivering DVDs, they might say, hey, we don't really like that because it's not that much harder to bring a DVD with the pizza. Okay. Any other questions? Um, they said there's not a billion pizzas ordered a year. Do you have any idea of how many are actually ordered online? So how much that market you could actually use for the service? We, we don't, but you know, presumably if it's a phone call as well, it could still be done. Outer Wall as a whole in their kiosk distribution. 
And we felt there's a real large opportunity in the legal marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> so utilize the knowledge they have for automated kiosks to address this growing market. Um, research shows that it's expected to grow to more than 10 million in five years. Um, and it's scaling by itself. You know, as more states legalize, um, it's scaling on its own. So they can enter Washington, Colorado, test it out. Um, and then as new states legalize, they really can, can scale. Um, we also have the Green Box and Red Box. We also have the back of our colleagues, Kush Cubes. But, um, and we really want to preserve uh, the brand image they wanted. Um, they could also just create a dummy corporation. Um, I don't know if many people knew that Coinstar owned Redbox, but it wasn't obvious to me at first. So we felt there would be enough of a disconnect that they wouldn't tarnish the brand of Redbox. Um, so we felt that was a viable option for them to address and uh, to look at. And it would probably be extremely profitable. For them. So in conclusion, um, <laughs> they need to shift away from the DVDs because it's, it's a dying industry. The paradigm is shifting towards digital streaming, digital media. Um, so even just to remain competitive, they're going to have to move to digital streaming. And then solution number two is really taking advantage of that developing multi-billion dollar market for legalized marijuana that is um, going on. So, do we have any questions? <laughs> How do you ensure, because you basically have to make sure that they have a, um, a doctor, right, like a prescription. Yeah. This is one of the reasons we don't do this for other kinds of medications. So, how, you know, how do you, how do you get around that? And the second was, is really the interesting, um, the criteria you used um, to select. I mean, there could have been other things that you could have selected. Yeah. So the question is, what, what criteria did you use to think about Using machine, you know, kiosk as a way as a distribution um, method for different kinds of products and services. Was there what was right, was there anything right behind legal marijuana on that list based upon this criteria? Yeah. Well, like obviously, you think of a marijuana vending machine. You can first hear about it. You think, well, maybe those are going to like Doritos machines or something like that. Um, but actually, the problem with legalized marijuana is it's dangerous to have expensive marijuana there. And, Side the counter with someone working there. And so if it's um, highly secure behind the counter, it's a safer way for someone to distribute the legal marijuana or other medications and things like that. And so um, it basically just makes it easier for those distribution units. So they need some sort of a like a one-time use code or something on a prescription that you Well, it would go still be the first, so you still have to go to an outlet for a legalized marijuana. Right. Professor, so your person was recreational. Isn't it my understanding that in Colorado and Washington it's legal for anybody? Yeah, it's legal. But in California, oh, okay. See, so in thought, California, that, it's medical use. Okay, so, so for California, it's medical. But actually, but in Colorado, you can buy it like <laughs> Colorado. Colorado. any of them. It's you it, don't, it's, you it's don't like, need prescription. It's like buying a cigarette. You can just buy marijuana. Actually, cigarettes. Though you can't get through machines, right? Because you got to be a, you can make yeah. They have to get those over. So that would probably be the check. It's like an age. They'd have to verify. Because I think you have more than one rules in Washington. Well, not even number of ounces you can own, and you can also make it up as well. So that would be the so, so when you guys call home tonight, you can tell that you now know how many ounces you can buy. <laughs> this is what you learned in class. <laughs> Obviously, there's some things you need to address, like um, not allowing minors to buy it like that, not owning more than the legal limit. Um, those are things that can be addressed with advancing technology, especially if you could just scan licenses or things like that. Um, was there, was there, were there any other uh, sort of products that you So Redbox actually, in? the report of Redbox is actually a grocery distribution kiosk um, that offered DVDs as well, but they found the DVDs are more profitable, so they actually shifted to that. Um, so it's something that has been attempted, they just found it was more profitable for DVDs, but since DVDs are dying out, it might be a better option for them to reconsider what they had originally developed. Um, are you guys planning on putting the hash machines inside like restaurants? Or <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be like. Well, we, were, we also thought about cars. developing a, a Domino's kiosk right next to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's obviously some stigma about. Yeah, like, would McDonald's be okay with having marijuana in 
that's up to Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it would increase their sales a little bit. Disney, Disney, right? Last, last question. We only got another minute. So uh, I'm trying to debate between asking a question about Redbox or about marijuana. But I think I'm going to go <laughs> Redbox. With the, uh, so, oh man, the marijuana was so killing them. So with Redbox, people are saying, people say this all day, is that the DVD market is dying out. But when you see that Redbox's revenues and profits have grown every year steadily, and that DVDs and online streaming offer different products. I mean, it's the same movie, but it's they're, they're differentiated in a lot of different ways. What, what evidence do we have that, besides I mean, Apple not having in their air, they don't have a, a DVD drive, normal, normal but what other evidence do we have that, that it's really dying out? Um, so rather than a hard physical as far as financial data, um, it's more substantiated as far as um, an increase in internet speeds, an increase in cloud computing, an increase in storage. All these things are leaning themselves towards having more digital libraries rather than physical DVDs. And that's an option for convenience because a digital, something you can stream over the internet that is the same quality is um, much more convenient than having to go out and DVD and return it. So really I think we're looking at what is a paradigm shift rather than, you know, this is not something that's signing out, but, you know, some fibers that people want to It's going to be easier and more convenient to stream content. And that's just the way that people are. So actually for all of the groups, this issue of what does the S curve look like for kiosks and for hard DVDs is critical, right? Because if the S-curve is going to be out 20, 30 years, they've got a long run. Um, but if it's 10 years, and it's going to actually turn, and so being able to somehow uh, model that and predict that is going to be pretty important. Yeah, and oh, sorry. Go ahead. just like with that, IBIS market research, and with total DVD game video rental, uh, has shown, and it's predicting for the next five years, it's shrinking anywhere from 10 to 30% annually. The total number of, this is of market revenues in the DVD game and video rental market. So the question is how much of that actually is, you know, Blockbuster dying versus, you know, Redbox still growing. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so we will see you on Wednesday. Please take your assessment before you read.